Good morning, everyone. We are back. Happy New Year to anyone who we haven't had a chance to speak to since the New Year. Uh, my name is Kieran Hodgers, and I am absolutely delighted to kick off our Right Round the Block with Patrice Lawrence. Um, today is a little bit different because it is also the launch of our Year of Writing programme, of which the right here, right now, and the residencies are a part of. Um, so the Year of Writing program uh, involves a host of organisations across the Liverpool city region. It celebrates writing in all its forms and it invites children and adults to take part in creative activities and events to help support our mental health, first and foremost, learn new skills and most importantly, have a bit of fun. I think we could definitely do with that at this time. There will be two writers joining us every day this week doing writing verse for both children and adults, including local legends Levi Tafari and Frank Cottrell Boyce. You can find out more information um, on cultureliverpool.co.uk or click the link in the comments, um, which will be up there shortly or just after the podcast. Um, this is all part of Writer's Block, as you know, with Patrice Lawrence, uh, who kicks off today. If you don't know who Patrice is, yeah, you are about to be introduced to a wonderful uh, writer and a wonderful person who I'm so excited for you all to meet. Patrice is an award-winning writer for children, teenagers and adults. Her books include Orange Boy, which was shortlisted for the Costa Children's Book Award and the winner of the Booksellers YA Prize and the Waterstones Prize for Older Children's Fiction. Uh, she also wrote Indigo Donut, which won the Bristol Crime Fest Young Adult Prize, Rose, Interrupted and Eight Pieces of Silver, which was the winner of the Women and Home Teen YA Award. Patrice worked for more than 20 years in the non-for-profit sector promoting social justice and equality. So she really is a perfect writer for us to have here at WOW because those issues are so close to our heart as well. She will be doing an in-conversation later on tonight at six o'clock talking about her experience, her journey, her writing journey um, and her career. She'll be reading a little bit uh, from her work. She'll be redoing an enterprise hub later on, on the 4th of February, um, about diversity in publishing, which is a huge uh, discussion that I'm really excited for us to kind of get our teeth into, as well as the open house and the block parties. She'll also be doing a, um, a workshop on how to change the world with stories, which uh, I think is uh, very close, obviously, to our hearts, but something that we could use a little bit more of now. And a block social about what can I get away with in writing? taboo risk should children be protected from difficult issues such as racism war and death etc and um, so we've got lots of really interesting really fantastic events with patrice coming up so do check out our website writingonthewall.org.uk uh, for more information on the writer's block but for now i will leave you in the fabulous and more than capable hands of our writer on the block patrice lawrence <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I hope you're well. Um, I won't say anything about myself after such a great introduction. Um, we'll go straight into our writing prompts. Um, with me, writing isn't about being published. Writing, I realised quite late, is really about how I, can, how I can articulate myself and how I can have a voice sometimes when I feel in real life I have to be somebody a bit different because I don't always quite fit in. And um, the first writing prompt I want to do with you is just a 90 second prompt. And I learned it from the fantastic poet, uh, Caroline Bird. And it's a way of demystifying writing because quite often when we're at school or when we're reading books, writing is made out to be this agonizing process where you've got to be this sort of um, tormented old white guy in a garret or smoking cigars in Cuba to put your words on a page. And actually it's not about that. Writing is about you and it's about how you see the world. So this exercise was a fantastic one where you have to find a description for what writing is and you can take the mick out of it. So the way it worked before is that we were all given a subject and we had to say writing is like. So the subject I was given was a tapeworm, you know that long worm that curls up in your stomach apparently. And I had to find writing is like a tapeworm because, so I said type it, writing is like a tape worm because a good story is already curled up inside you and slowly unwinds and it can be painful to get it out but when it's gone you miss it. So yours is, I'm just going to share a screen with you for a second. So your 
is, I'm just hoping you can see me actually. Sorry, me having my technical issues as well. Let me try that again. That's better. You wouldn't believe that I actually practiced this. Anyway, so just before um, in October, November, um, I ended up carrying 29 bags of wood up a flight and a half of stairs. That's my carried wood upstairs face. So your prompt is writing is like a sack of wood because... And you have got 90 seconds and I'm going to put the timer on. So anything that's in your head, there's no right or wrong. Writing is like a sack of wood because write. And I will give you countdowns. Sixty seconds left. Thirty seconds left. Fifteen seconds left. Three, two, one. So hopefully you've got something on paper there and I will take away my sad climbing upstairs with 29 bags of wood face and it's back to me. So the second exercise is one that I always quite often do when I start books because I find it impossible to start a book without naming my characters. And for me, names are really important. So this exercise is going to be about names. So let me just tell you first the story of my name. So my name is Patrice. Eunice Lawrence. Um, I'm Patrice because my father is called Patrick. He was born on St. Patrick's Day in Guyana to an Indian family, presumably Catholic, who knows. Uh, Eunice, I'm not quite sure where that comes from, but I hated it with a vengeance growing up. But actually, um, apparently it was Nina Simone's original name, so I kind of claimed that one for the sisters. Lawrence is my mum's um, family name because my parents were married uh, and they never did get married. Um, um, my mum decided she wanted me to have her name, which I'm very happy with. My daughter has my name, so we've got this thing passing down a patriarchal, sort of matriarchal line in our family. But also I'm called... Uh, Pat by my mum and my stepdad, only Patrice where mum's cross, um, by my daughter calls me mummy because in a Caribbean, um, she's adopted a sort of Caribbean trope where you call your parents mummy and daddy even when they're um, adults, but she will call me mother when she's with other peers who aren't Caribbean because I don't get it, she never calls me mum. Um, my brother, younger brother, calls me Pat Rice because why on earth would a little boy, uh, a little brother call you by by the right name? Um, I've been called Trish by people. I've been called Patsy. Sometimes uh, my name is wrong in emails. Um, I, my pronouns are her and she. But I don't like having a title, Miss, Mrs. or Miss, because I don't think it's any business to know what my marital status is. So what I want you to do quickly, again, for 90 seconds, I want you to write down all the, your names, all the things that you're called, the things that you call yourself, your full name, any history about your name that you have that you think is interesting. So even with my surname, my family name, Lawrence, even when I was married, I kept my name because my Lawrence family are sort of the enduring factor. And also got seven scary aunts and I really want to be a Lawrence to be like them. So 
90 seconds, I want you to write down all the things and the names that you are called, even things that you might call yourself, starting now. You can just list them, you can mind map them, the easiest way, whatever it is is easiest for you. You don't have to write it in prose, just dump it on a paper. 60 seconds. Thirty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hopefully you've got something on paper now. So just a list of the different names that you are called. Now we're gonna think about how we can develop a character just from those prompts for a little bit of slightly longer writing, about 15 minutes. So this is my book, Indigo Donuts. And um, when I started to write it, I had no idea what I was going to write about. So I thought about a name. So I called her Indigo because I wanted a name out of, because it's a color of the rainbow. But I thought, what if she's got siblings all named after colours of the rainbow. So she's got scarlet, coral, primrose, <laughs> uh, teal, bluebell, indigo and violet. But because she was brought up in a care sy system, she's separated from all her siblings and doesn't know that she's part, she's never met her rainbow family. He's called Bailey because his parents were um, met after they'd been uh, protesting against apartheid in Trafalgar Square on the night bus and going past the old Bailey and I thought if we have a kid we're going to call him Bailey and already I developed these characters so this is what I want you to do this is a present that a friend gave me when I moved house so first thing I want you to do is just look at those colours and I want you to write down a word associated with one of these colours And like I always said, there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever comes up in your mind. Right. Now I want you to write down a word associated with any other quality of this. So it could be the material it's made from. It could be the textures. It could be what you feel the sounds might make of the, of the beads clanked together. So one other word associated with this. Right, hopefully you've got your word. And of all these things, again, I just can't emphasize no right or wrong answer. The first thing that hits the top of your head is gonna be it. What's in your subconscious? Just blurt it out on the paper because this is for you and this is your individual voice. Nobody judges you because it's gonna be right. So two words, that is your character's name. You can decide which order they go, which is their given name and which is their um, family name. So I want you to tell me first, so give that character, if you want, an age. If you want, you can give that character a gender. It's up to you. Again, no right or no wrong. Now, that character is telling you a story. They are telling you about how they got their name. So I want you to write, in 15 minutes, a story that a character is telling you about how they got that name you gave them. And things you can think about, do they like that name? Do they use that name? Have they had to change their name to fit in with someone else? Have they changed their name back? What name do they tell people 
Do they tell people different names? Just think about yourself and all the things that you are called by people, the things that you might call yourself, um, your titles, if your name is shortened, just to change it so people can pronounce it better. Uh, all of those things and just give those to your character and your character be anybody or anything. You don't have to write prose. You can do it in a mind map. So put the name in a circle, have lots of lines come out and just write random words. What Every way works for you because I can emphasize there's no right or wrong and I hope I don't have to say spelling does not matter as long as you know what you're writing that's what technology is there for so I'm going to set my uh, clock for 15 minutes I might mute my video for a little bit so you don't feel you have to stare at me or I don't suddenly find I'm scratching my eyebrow and putting you off so let me go set it for 15 minutes. Right, 15 minutes timer going on now. Just have to say that I am that person who sets a timer for 15 seconds and set off 15 minutes. Don't let that put you off though.
Right, having had a bit of a mixed luck with my uh, timer. Not quite sure under there. Uh, I've got about ten more minutes. And just a few tips in case you are, you know, are stuck. However the character's voice comes, it doesn't matter. It can be your voice. So quite often when I'm writing, I give the character my voice and then play around with it. And think about the first exercise that you did as well with writing is like a sack of wood because, and think of all the things that come into your imagination to describe things and you can give those to your characters as well. So it's about giving your character a unique voice telling you the story of their name but one that is very much shaped by you and your experiences because that's what makes your writing unique it's actually you and what you bring to it you don't have to write like um the sort of books that we are told are good and the books that we are told are classics your writing is your writing it's you on paper and that's what makes it special last five minutes and sort of dive as deep as you can think about the feelings associated with name um a friend recently was just saying a friend of i think Ghanaian heritage about how frustrating she finds it that people seem to just um deliberately mispronounce her name 
Um, so again, think about your characters, the feelings associated with what your character gets called, um, what they call themselves, how other people might treat them because of their name. So last few minutes, or four and a half minutes, really think about the emotions that name, just name alone, give you and what they could give to your character. Last three minutes, really. So just scribble down, don't correct yourself, don't edit. Even if you can't put, you know, if you think, can't really get, quite get it into a sentence, just put the words down, the feelings, it doesn't matter, because you can go back to it. Um, you know, I just, I'll just show you very quickly that, I just list things sometimes, you can't really see that. <laughs> Perhaps that's my scribble. But I just list things, I just list ideas. Um, so again, if you can't quite get that voice, it doesn't matter. Put it in a list, do it in a mind map, but just picture the emotions. Picture, if you can, hear that voice in your head of that character and see if you can get something down on, on paper or on screen or on your preferred me method of, of recording stories. Okay, we've got 55 seconds. Forty five seconds. Thirty seconds. Twenty. Ten. Three, two, one. And that is, that's this morning's prompt. I hope there was some interesting material for you. I hope it didn't feel too um tough because honestly it's not meant to be this is for you and this is just a way to get some of that stuff that amazing stuff that's in your head 
out onto paper. Thank you and maybe see you later for the question and answer or hopefully have a chance to see you over the next few weeks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, Patrice. That was an absolutely fantastic way to kick off our Monday, but also to kick off your residency and the year of writing. Um, thank you so much for joining us as always. Um, you can check out all the Writer on the Block events at writingonthewall.org.uk and you can check out all the um, information on the year of writing at the link that is in the description right now. Um, so hopefully we will see some of you later for the In Conversation with Patrice where she'll be reading from some of her work and answering your questions. So we hope to see you then. Take care. Goodbye.